Okay, you guys can uh, grab your PowerPoint. And we will get started on vital signs. We're going to take the vital signs unit pretty slow, relatively slow anyways. Um, we'll kind of get through temperature and respirations and pulse, and then we'll get on to blood pressure. And blood pressure, sometimes some people have a harder time with it than others. We're going to learn how to manually take a blood pressure, so you guys will know how to do that. We'll do a skills check like we've done before with hand washing. Uh, anyways, it's a fun the fun kind of unit, I want you guys to learn it and learn it well, and so that's why we'll take it a little bit slow. I love this cartoon here. She says, uh, the nurse says, my goodness, when's the last time anyone checked on Mr. Clink in room 207? So I take it it had been a while with his, looks a little bit emaciated. All right, vital signs. The most important assessment measurements that we have. And the reason for that is that they kind of measure our vital organs, our vital signs, give us a picture of if our vital organs are really functioning or not functioning the way that they need to. Okay, so that includes our temperature, pulse, respirations, and blood pressure. Those are kind of the four basic vital signs. Now, sometimes people will add in a couple of other ones. One is pain. Sometimes people call it the, the six vital sign fifth vital sign or whatever, and then um, sixth vital sign. Anyways, and then oxygen saturation is something else that is routinely taken on pretty much everybody these days when they do vital signs. Uh, oxygen saturation is where, if you're not sure what that is, you know, if you've ever been to the emergency room, sometimes they'll put a little, kind of looks like a little uh, claw or something on your finger and it has a red light on it, or they might do a sticker and wrap it around your fingernail and it has a light on it, that is an, that's a oxygen, uh, that checks your oxygen saturation in it. So it checks like the percentage of oxygen in your blood, the way as compared to what it should be, okay? Uh, step one of taking vital signs is always wash your hands, okay? Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. I cannot say that enough. Y'all know how I feel about washing your hands, um, so, that's always number one. And let them see you wash your hands. If you're going into a patient's room, let them see you put hand sanitizer on. Um, let them see you wash your hands in the sink. You know, just because you do it before the room, it just, the more the things you do like that where people can actually see you and watch you, they're going to have more confidence in you. Okay. All right. So the order in which we take our vital signs, the four main ones at least. Notice. Okay, we've got our abbreviations on here. We've got respirations, pulse, temperature, and then blood pressure. This is if you're doing an oral temperature, tympanic, or a thermo scan. Now, oral, of course, is you just stick a thermometer in your mouth. Tympanic is where they put one, your, your uh, tympanic membrane is your eardrum. So that's where they use one of the ones that goes in your ear. And a thermo scanner is usually one that they can rub across your forehead or your temple that actually is supposed to get a reading of the temperature in your capillaries. Now, if you're doing any of those kind of temperatures, then this is the order you go in. The reason that it's in this specific order is that you're going uh, least invasive to most invasive. And if you guys will remember the word invasive, I think it's been a while since we've talked about that word, but invasive means um, it's like getting more uncomfortable or it goes deeper into the body. Like, for example, you know, um, like if you're talking about shots, for example, okay, a, uh, you know, a little insulin shot that has a little bitty needle on it is less invasive than like an IM injection that you get like in a vaccine or an immunization or a shot of antibiotic or something that you get in the muscle. But a muscle, an IM injection, is less invasive than like an IV that would stay in there. So sometimes you can think of it as like least painful to most painful or um, least uncomfortable to most uncomfortable if you want to think of it that way. So that's why it's in this particular order. A lot of people do respirations and pulse at the same time anyway. So it's not really going to matter if you get out of this. But as far as this class goes and your skills check goes, whenever you're checking these things, I want you to check them in that order. Respirations and pulse, those can really be interchanged, and then temperature. Now, if you're doing a rectal temp, like on a baby, for example, you might do a rectal temp. Um, you can do respirations, pulse, blood pressure, 
temperature because the temperature is, is more invasive usually than the blood pressure I don't know with babies it usually doesn't bother them that bad for you to take a rectal tent but the blood pressure is gonna make them scream so anyways you have to use your judgment but. okay documentation so whenever you write out the vital signs for someone you actually write them you don't have to put an abbreviation you can if you need to but you don't have to you can just write them all in a line so for example um, and this is the order in which you write them temperature pulse respiration blood pressure now I do want you guys to know this this is the order in which they go TPR blood pressure that's how I remember it TPR blood pressure TPR blood pressure so this gives you an example this is how it could be written 98.8 dash 92 dash 12 dash 120 over 70 okay 98.8 that's perfectly normal temperature 92 is a little bit high pulse 12 normal respirations 120 over 70 that's a great blood pressure and so this is how you can write it. you don't have to put t p r any of that you can just write it out just like this okay so just a couple of ideas on how sometimes people will write out vital signs so here is an example maybe thought it was maybe it's on there and I just need to <clears throat> There we go. Okay, so here's an example of a chart that someone might use. Here's a flow sheet. So, um, like in a doctor's office, maybe. So you put the date here, initials, their weight. This little pound sign means pounds. So that's their weight in pounds, what it's asking for. And then you can write in their blood pressure here, pulse, respirations, temperature. This is not a particular order. And then the notes. And the reason that we use flow sheets for vital signs, or sometimes we don't even use flow sheets, sometimes we use um, like more of like a chart, or a, uh, like a graphic type chart. Oopsie. I'll show you that one too. <clears throat> this is an example of a chart that you might see. Now this one is kind of a strange look. It's kind of a strange look to it. And this one's obviously old since it has the date is 19 something. But anyway, so you take you would take their pulse and you actually chart it onto this graph. So for example, if their heart rate is 90, let's say I do it at 12, I'd fill in this with 12. Put a little dot here at 90, come back in four hours later, check it again. If it's 95, I'd, chart, I'd put a little dot on here. I come back in another four hours later, and now it's jumped up to 115. Okay, I've got a little chart going. I'm going to see that 115 is not their normal pulse. So there may be something going on. Maybe they're in more pain than normal. Maybe they're anxious. Maybe they are getting an infection. There can be lots of things that might make your heart rate go up. This is a really great thing to show. Just to give somebody an idea of what's the patient's normal and what's not normal because it's all going to be plotted out on a graph and that's really nice especially if you're in somewhere like um like a nursing home or a rehab um, or even at the hospital you know you can really look even though you may have only had that patient for a few hours but they have a whole you know three days worth of vital sign records you can go back in and look and see what's normal and what's not normal for them you know, their pulse has been 90 the whole time, you're not really going to be worried about it. But if their pulse has been 50 the whole time, and now all of a sudden it's 90, you're going to say, okay, what's going on? You know, there may be something I'm not seeing. <coughs> okay. All right, so that is your documentation. I want you guys, make sure that you look at that. Know how to document, know what order it goes in, TPR, blood pressure, and then make sure you know what order to take vital signs in. Uh, respiration, pulse, temperature, blood pressure. Okay, least invasive to most invasive. All right, pain. Let's talk about pain for just a few minutes. Okay, pain is what the patient says it is. 
Okay, if they look like they're in pain or they don't look like they're in pain, it doesn't matter because your opinion doesn't matter. You can't feel what they're feeling. Okay, so pain is a subjective assessment. It means it's not based on anything that you can see or measure. It's just you have to go by what they tell you. And if they say they may be happy as a lark, but they say that their pain is 9 out of 10, you have to chart in your, you have to write down in your chart that their pain is 9 out of 10. Now, if that's the case, I'm also going to write patient smiling, visiting, you know, moving without difficulty, complaints of pain, 9 out of 10, had last medication at whatever time, you know, whatever. I'm going to chart all that. I'm going to chart what I see, um, but I can't make up my own number for them. You can't do that. Okay, there's a few different pain scales that we use to help people kind of get a few, like, give us an idea of how severe their pain is. Okay, this first one is called a Wong Baker Faces Scale. Now, this is primarily used for children or people who cannot speak and tell you um, how bad their pain is. Okay, pain. Oh, no. Um, here we go. <clears throat> okay, this is a Wong Baker faces scale. Now, normally, if I if I am your nurse or your physician, and I come in and ask you, I'm going to say, "Hello, ma'am. Um, how are you today?" You know, you said that your leg is hurting. Can you give me, can you tell me how severe your pain is? On a scale from 0 to 10, 0 being no pain and 10 being the worst pain you can ever imagine, how would you rate the severity of your pain? How bad is your pain today? And they're going to give you a number. Okay, that's for an adult. You guys could do that. Okay, you guys could do that pretty easily. Oh, okay, it's a 6 out of 10 or, you know, it's a 2 out of 10 or whatever. Kids can't do that. Like my 3-year-old, she could not tell you, I mean, she knows her numbers, but um, she can count all day long, but it, she can't tell you how bad her pain is. But if I show her this picture, I can, she can tell me how she feels. I want to explain. I'd say, okay, this, um, can you point to, to the face that tells how you feel right now, how bad your pain is right now? Okay, this one is for no pain at all. This one, it means that it hurts a little bit. This one means it hurts a little bit more. This one means it hurts a lot or even more. This means it hurts a whole lot. And this means it hurts the worst ever. Okay, that might be a way that I would explain this. And then you tell them to point. Can you point to which face that shows you how, that shows how you feel? Okay, and have them point. And you can write that number down. Now you cannot just hold their little faces still up to their face. And, I, and, and try to like compare. Okay, well, they've got one tier, so I think I'm gonna give them an eight. It doesn't work that way. They have to be able to point to this uh, scale in order to, for you to be able to use it, okay? Now, uh, this next one is just our normal numeric pain scale, which is like what I was saying. It's called a verbal analog scale. And you can just ask you verbally. On a scale of 0 to 10, how would you rate your pain? 0 being no pain, 10 being the worst pain you can ever imagine. Here it is. 0 to 10, verbal analog scale. 0 to 10. I'm pretty straightforward. Now, this last one is a little bit different. Okay. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Well, this is one that they have, um, that this particular organization had recommended for a nonverbal adult. Uh-oh. Hmm, I guess that has changed. I'm going to count it. Uh, but this flat scale that's on here, F-L-A-C-C, -C, this is for infants and young children who can't yet point to the face of scale, can't yet speak and tell you how they feel. And I'll show you how this one works. FLAC is actually an acronym for face, 
legs. It may not work, but anyways, it's a it's also a numeric scale, and each one of these five things has a zero to two um, scale. So, like you look at their face, if they're not crying. Oh, crying is one of the C's. Crying and consolability. I cannot think of the A right now. Same thing. Um, face, legs. Anyways, crying and consolability. And I'll think of the A maybe in a minute. Anyways, faces, so do they, are they have a grimace? You know, are they smiling? That would be a zero. If they're like grimace or wincing in pain, that might be a two. Legs, you do the same thing. If they're still and calm, zero. If they're kicking and moving, then uh, that would be a two. Uh, crying, or if they're crying, that would add up to, that would be a two. If they're not, you know, when counting anything. And then consolability means how easy is it for them to stop crying? So if I pick them up and hold them, do they quit or does that not help? Are they still going crazy? So, and then you add up those things. You add up all of those and then you give them a numeric value from zero to 10. And so it works the same way. It's just really good for non-verbal. I'm sorry, I can't think of the A right now. Let me look it up and I'll, I don't know why that has slipped my mind at this moment. Um, tell you. Oh, activity. Well, I could think of that. Activity. So, are they moving? Are they lethargic? So forth. So, those are another thing. I'm sorry, I couldn't think of that. Okay, so five things that you want to ask um, if somebody is experiencing pain because you want them to be able to describe it. Okay, so here's five PQRST. There's a couple different ways that you can do this, but provocation. So um, what provokes it? What makes it better? What makes it worse? What makes it start up again? So, so what are what changes it? Medication make it better? And this movement make it worse? What works? Okay, quality. That means get tell me some words to describe your pain. Okay, so some examples of words that people might use might be burning, sharp, stabbing pain. Um, it's just a dull ache. It's sore. It tingles to numb, you know, those can be all things that people would use. Radiate, so does it radiate to somewhere else? If they're having chest pain, does it radiate down their arm? If they have leg, if they have back pain, is it radiating down their leg? That means does it kind of shoot to another place? Severity, of course, is the number, like we said with the rating scale, and then time. When did it start? How long has it been going on? Does it stop when you, whatever, you know, how long does it last? Those are all examples of that. Okay, and that is your intro to vital signs. So we will we'll get started this week. We'll start doing temperatures tomorrow. <clears throat>